Hello, bonjour, namaste, ni hao, and oh, hi, everybody. What is going on? It is Gail right here, and welcome back to the YouTube channel once again for another Don Machi Battle Chronicle video. And today, we are going to be checking out an interview that Fujino Mori did for the release of Arrow of Orion's campaign in Don Machi Battle Chronicle. So, of course, if you guys go on to enjoy this video, remember to leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel, and let me know in the comment section down below what do you guys think about Amori's interview? Is there anything interesting that you guys picked up on while he conducted? this interview let me know in the comment section down below because he just doesn't go over just like oh how excited he is for Danmachi Battle Chronicle releasing our Overrine. he includes some things he'd like to see from the game including new events and new story content so let's go over it and let's check out what he has to say to the unexplored areas of Danmachi, what is the original scenario that Fujino Omori would like to see in the 3D motion of Danmachi Battle Chronicle? So, of course, one advantage that Danmachi Battle Chronicle has over other Danmachi games, including uh, the console game that came out a few years ago, Infinite Combat, is that it is a proper 3D game, right? Um, Danmachi Memoria Freeze. 2D, uh, Danmachi Cross Historia, browser 2D game, Orari Rhapsodia, browser 2D game, and then Infinite Combat was a chibi 3D game, but let's be real, the chibi models and everything were terrible to look at. It, it's okay if they go down the chibi route, but at least make it look good. Infinite Combat did not look good, so I can understand why this question was being po proposed or, you know, shown or given to Amori Sensei purely because this is the first time that you could arguably say Danmachi has looked good in a game and modernized in a game obviously right because let's be real Danmimo looked decent to good at times of course right but it was never modern realistically right it was very visual novel whereas Danmachi Battle Chronicle has the added advantage of conducting you know these 3D CG scenes and stuff like that so there is that added factor right Battle Action RPG, uh, Danmachi Battle Chronicle, is based on the light novel Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon, Danmachi, by Fujino Omori, which has sold over 15 million copies in total. Alright, let's take a look right here. Uh, obviously, Danmachi Battle Chronicle, yada yada yada, same thing what was mentioned right here has been mentioned again. This is the latest game in the Danmachi series and is an uh, action RPG that allows you to relive the activities of Bell and other adventures with anime-like 3D graphics. You can enjoy exhilarating actions uh, or action with a variety of attack methods and commands such as the special moves shown in the work. In addition to the main story, there are plenty of competitive content and training functions. So, of course, this is all in Japanese. I have used Google Translate to roughly translate everything in one shot for me to basically read through it in detail very quickly. So keep in mind that there will be some discrepancies here and there, but for the most part, we can understand what Amori and of course the questions are trying to, you know, propose and trying to say, of course, right? The beautiful 3D graphics of Danmachi Battle Chronicle seem to have impressed the original author, Mr. Amori, and have provided him with a variety of inspiration. So when we asked Amori to send uh, Omori Sensei to come up with an original situation that uh, for the Danmachi characters that he would like to see in 3D motion from the original author's perspective, a story that even the Danmachi Battle Chronicle development staff was interested in was born. So let's take a look at what these ideas are. So case one, what does Ice usually do in her room? Sir, are there any stories or situations that can be drawn using the 3D motion of Danmachi Battle Chronicle? If you mean a Mori scenario, the 3D uh, motion is enviable. It's great that you don't have to explain the situation using text and you can move things around in a variety of ways. If I could move it like this, I would start thinking this is how I would use it. The home screen of Danmachi Battle Chronicle right now is also 3D. Right now, I can enjoy the motions of Hestia relaxing in a room, daydreaming about Belle and sleeping. But I'm curious about how the characters spend their time outside of the story. Ice takes great care of her sword. Fighting is a big part of her mind, so she shouldn't just leave it to the blacksmith. In Volume 9 of uh, Sword Oratoria, the guide in Sword Oratoria, um, I wrote a scene where Ice is being taught how to maintain a sword by Gareth, so I think she'll continue doing that forever. Not only does she eat Jagamaru Kun, but she also has the personality of an adventurer who never fails to prepare. Obviously, the, the red text is basically Amori Sensei, uh, basically uh, him saying it, of course. So let's take a look. Uh, she's a well-known adventurer, so he's, she's pretty sure about that. Loki Familia are first-class adventures, but all of them have pay faced pain at least once, so no member should skimp on such preparations. I think everyone has their own way of adjusting, and by not being careless or arrogant, I think they can become what is called a first-class adventurer. By the way, I will be leaving a link to this interview down below in the uh, description, so you guys can go and check it out, of course, right? So yeah. 
um, they uh, show a uh, uh, a video or a clip of basically uh, eyes taking care of her sword and everything. This is obviously when you set up the home screen right off certain characters, including eyes. This is what would play basically, of course. You guys know the drill. I have Freya in my home screen. You already know what we're doing over there. Um, but yeah, as you can see, eyes is polishing her sword. She's mentioning, uh, you know... Uh, what she should do with the sword like she says maybe I should polish it a little bit more huh it sticks out uh, her weapon the sword fits me best but I also want a spare weapon so yeah the uh, pretty cool very very nice all right Sears cooking failure what other situations would be interesting to see in 3d um, it might be Omori says it might be interesting to see scenes in 3d where Sear um, you know uh, fails uh, at cooking and then Ryu and her friends who were watching the scene were trying to sneak away so yeah that's the scene basically I think this is you are seer if I'm not mistaken I think it is I could no, I, yeah I'm pretty sure it's you are seer basically this is the home screen for you are seer um Isis oh never mind this is new, so I guess this, these are upcoming new characters, maybe, or there'll be additional scenes that they'll add to the existing characters, maybe. So, the uh, sword cleaning scene and Sears cooking scene will be officially implemented in the home uh, screen of Danmachi Battle Chronicle at a later date. So, I guess maybe a new Seer and Ice maybe coming out? Potentially, we'll see. What if Finn and Otaral were to run into each other? How do you think about unexpected conversation scenes between the characters? For example, Finn and Otaral run into the street, uh, each other into the street, which seems interesting, even though they don't really interact in the original story. As Otaral tries to pass by, Finn asks if he wants to go for a drink, but Otaral says no and tries to leave. I see. It seems like uh, the 3D motion can even express the subtle atmosphere between the two of the characters. That's right, since they're both leaders of the Familia, it's not a good idea to get along with them too much, but Finn seems to talk to them regardless of that. Finn re recognizes Otaral's overwhelming strength and believes that he is a wall that he must overcome, and Otaral thinks he Finn is better in everything except strength, so it'll be interesting to see how these two interact. Finn is better than me in this kind of invitation situation, so I think he'll say something clever to keep Otaral in his tracks. Riveria investigating Lily or Ryu. Are there any other combinations that aren't depicted in the main story? Omori says, I haven't had many conversations with the main, main characters, but I think it would be interesting to have them talk, just like the combination of Riveria and Lily. Riveria knows that Finn is interested in Lily, so I think she cares about what kind of girl she is. Or it might be interesting to bump into Ryu. Uh, Riveria seems to have realized that Ryu is a survivor of the Australia Familia. So, very interesting concept here. Um, development sa uh, staff says, hmm, I see. The person in charge of development is definitely trying to implement it, right? And then they go on to say that this these two scenes will be implemented in Danmachi Battle Chronicle at a later date. So, I would not be surprised. I mean, we kind of had the encounter scene in a way already with, of course... Um, the uh, uh, All Comers Championship Decider Match, the sumo fight, right? Finn and Otaral had their uh, bit of an interaction, of course, and everything, right? But the Reveria where Lily or Ryu is investigated hasn't happened yet. So again, potentially us getting, well, well I think what is our fourth or fifth Reveria at this point. And of course, a brand new Lily will come out at some point as well. So there is something interesting there, of course, that, you know, we've basically got confirmations about potential upcoming events that we could be getting. So maybe a new Finn Otaro, maybe a new Riveria Lily. Obviously, with the Otaro, may come a new Freya as well. So a lot of things to mention there, of course, right? Would you like to have a Gal game event with Danmachi Battle Chronicle? Omori says, I would like to hold an, uh, a Gal game event. It's like a youth romantic comedy where the player, uh, where the player, with the player as the main character, Eyes, Lafia, Hestia, Seer, and Hermes as a supporting character as an April Fool's Day project. I mean, we kind of, we sort of had that whole male idols thing in Dan Mimo last year, of course, right? So I guess you could make an argument and say that technically it was somewhat done, but of course this will be a proper like dating simulator basically for Dan Machi Battle Chronicle. Is this an April Fool's joke for next year? So this upcoming year? I assume they must have done this interview before, of course, the release of... Uh, or before the new year started, right? Um, I've never written a scenario for a Gal game, but even if Belle is the main character and the game is over due to the difficulty level, Finn can easily beat it, but if Finn appears, will it be game over? The pattern, that pattern is interesting, lol. I really hope it comes through. <laughs> Development staff said, eh, that's a bold strategy, Cotton. Uh, let's see how it works out. Omori is like, this is just my own imagination, please ignore it. And then, yeah, they've said basically it's not been decided, but let's be real. You could easily do like a dating simulator kind of like event with uh, Belle as the main character, 100%. 100%.
Is there a sequel to the movie version of that story? So, of course, this is the Arrow of Orion. 3D motion of Don Machi Battle Chronicle. I think the inspiration that comes from this will make the world of Don Machi more appealing. This is something I haven't written anywhere yet, but I'm thinking of a short story that is a sequel to Don Machi Battle Chronicle. We talked about the Orion's Arrow epilogue below. So, I would like to implement it in Don Machi Battle Chronicle. This is a story that cannot be covered part, part of it, as part of an interview article. So, yes. That is something that we did find out as well, is that we will be getting an original epilogue to Danmachi Battle Chronicle and Arrow of Orion, of course. In, well, I should say we will be getting an original epilogue for Arrow of Orion in Danmachi Battle Chronicle, which I think is fantastic. Again, it's such a nice touch. We did have something in Dan Mimo, if I recall correctly, like a mini epilogue as well. But uh, of course, if it's completely different and it's set up in a 3D scenario and everything, we'll have to wait and see, man. I cannot wait to see what it is. It's probably going to be something like Dan Mimo's where it's set 10,000 thousand years later bell and artemis meet again and everything all that jazz but yeah it's gonna be something like that i feel it's 100 uh going to be something like that and then they of course go on to talk about the fact that from jan 20 uh 17th 2024 arrow of Orion will be implemented in Danmachi battle chronicle along with the original epilogue there will be a pickup gacha for artemis as an adventurer Obviously, we've talked about this in the previous video. This article doesn't mention that it is paid only, which maybe, you know, they might know something we don't, where they know that there is a free gacha coming out for Artemis. Well, we'll have to wait and see. But of course, along with that, they go on to talk about the fact that we can obtain this Hestia for free as well. Um, the original epilo epilogue they've mentioned as well. We know the date for when that is going to be implemented. That is going to be in the final five days of the event. So... The campaign goes from the 17th of January to the 19th of February and the epilogue is going to be implemented on the 14th of Feb. I do believe that it will be a permanent thing, by the way. It will be added into the main story because, of course, the Arrow of Orion story arc is added is being added to the main story. It's not an event. It's a main story. So I would not be surprised if we get something uh, or the epilogue added there, basically. So keep that in mind. But yes, this interview was kind of nice. I think we got some good information about like what future events may look like or what units we might get for future events. And overall, it also seems like, you know, Omori Sensei is definitely, I mean, of course, as the author and as the head of the franchise, he has to be somewhat interested in Danmachi Battle Chronicle. I feel like he's not as interested in the game as he was Dan Mimo. And there's a variety of reasons for that. I think first and foremost, he's too busy writing, of course, the new game story, the console game story. He's also focusing on the actual light novels and everything, taking a bit of a breather either from of course writing 13 light novels in a row right but also second of all he's just not as attuned with the developers of this game yet like he was with Dan Mimo's developers of course we know his connection with the OG Dan Mimo developers big time right they would, he used to be a big fan of them and they would be a big fan of his and they would work really well in tandem it doesn't seem like it's the same here of course right um so that is something to bear in mind of course i feel right in that regards uh but yeah either way you know there is another article here so let me have a look and see maybe we'll have something different here potentially i want to see when was this was this something i'd already read or maybe i missed out on this article no i did not no i've i've read this article i'm pretty sure i've read this article before yeah, yeah, yeah i've read this article before i've read this article before either way you know, it is uh, it is quite interesting in that regards. It does feel like he's a, a little bit n not as interested as, uh, you know, he might have been in Dan Mimo. But I can understand why in that regards. Because, again, you know, your connection with the development team is completely different. You spend six years with one development team shifting to a new one. Especially if you're an introvert or anything of that sort, it becomes even trickier. And then, of course, on top of that, like I said, he's busy with all these other projects. The new game coming up. Uh, both the console game and the gacha game and then of course all the light novel stuff the anime and all that jazz it's tricky it's a very tricky affair Dan Mimo came out at a time where you could argue that the Danmachi series was a little bit of a lull you know we just had Sword Oratory release which was a bit of a failure the anime was in a standstill because season 2 didn't release until 2019 and just generally as well like the light novels were also progressing very slowly at the time so it was a completely different era back then versus now. So that's also something to keep in mind. But anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. What do you guys think about the interview? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? What did you find interesting? Of course, if remember, if you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next one. Until then, take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye.